Hello world, and we are back. My name is Kyle Fischl. This is going to be episode 156 of my poker vlog. This is the month of birthdays. It was recently my nephew's first birthday, and he had to take the most important decision of his young life. Yeah. What's up, dude? Dude, he did. Oh! That's your starter, dude. Yes, so his starting Pokemon will be Squirtle, and he will get Squirtle memorabilia from me for the rest of his life, whether he likes it or not. That's just the way it goes. Additionally, my birthday is July 22nd, and my wife definitely went overboard on this, getting me way more gifts than I actually deserve. But additionally, the owners of the ETP club on Club GG have given me an additional present, two $500 giveaways, for the week of my birthday, from the 22nd to the 29th of July, $500 goes to whichever player plays the most hands across that week, as well as $500 goes to whichever player has the highest winnings in that week. So two ways to win. One, play one day, win a few hundred dollars, hope your winnings holds up to be the top prize. Additionally, play every day, play three tables, fold every single hand, get the most hands in, get $500 that way. This is only available to subscribers to my channel who sign up to Club GG, the ETP club with my referral code. Hope to see you there, good luck. Bro, that's such a bad start. Oh, so dumb. Oh well, welcome to the game. Now let's go over some hands. First hand of note. With one limp, a late position player raises to $10. I'm in the big blind with King Jack offsuit. I think it's fine to call here. The limper calls as well, so we end up going three ways to a flop of Jack 10 4 Rainbow. Flopping top pair, good kicker. We're feeling pretty good about our hand. As we don't have the betting lead, we check in flow. The pre flop aggressor bets $15. Half pot size bet, not going anywhere with top pair, good kicker. Could raise here some of the time, but we're still losing like ace, jack, maybe jack 10. So we proceed with just a call. The limper decides to fold, so we're heads up to a turn card, which is the three of clubs. On this card, when I check to my opponent, he checks it back. Good news for me is maybe he has a hand like ace 10, pocket eights, ace king, things like that. But when the river is the queen of spades, ace king and ace queen get there, as well as king queen, but... I think we can go for a block bet here, betting not necessarily for value, but to make sure we're not blown off our hand on a creative river bluff. So I lead off for $20. My opponent thinks for a little bit, but then ends up making the call. I announce Jack, and he doesn't really say anything, and then I show my hand, and I get a slight slow roll as my opponent eventually turns over pocket aces. Raised from youth by a band of mercenaries called the Ravagers, led by Yandu Udanta. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know how this machine worked. So, starting off on the wrong foot here at this 1-3 table, but plenty of poker left to come. Following that, with an under-the-gun straddle, the small blind calls. I'm in the big blind with 7-8 of clubs. I decided to raise this one up to $15, and the straddler and the small blind decide to call. So we're going three ways to a flop of jack-six-deuce with two diamonds. When it checks to me, this could be one of the times where I go for a zero equity bluff here. It's tough for my opponent to have a jack, and the time that they don't, I just take the pot down with 8 high, which would be great, so I bet $35. The straddler decides to fold, but unfortunately the small blind is not done with this hand yet. When the turn is the 3 of spades, doesn't give me back to our clubs, doesn't give me any additional straight equity, so we're probably just going to give this one up. We were caught, is what it is, but when the river is the ace of hearts... I think this kind of reopens the door to me. I have all the aces in range. My opponent likely called with just a jack. And my suspicion's kind of confirmed when he leads for $20. Very small river bet. It looks like it's just a jack trying to get to a cheap showdown. And when we see the opportunity to steal pots, we are definitely going to take them. So I decide to raise the river as a bluff to $90. I think my hand functions great in this regard. 
the only jack x i really block here is jack seven but besides that all the jacks are in range and we're trying to wrap an ace here trying to get a jack to fold but it will not be the case this time my opponent eventually puts the chips in the middle i just immediately muck my cards i don't need to show i don't feel the need to force my opponent to show although for the vlog i'll probably do it on the next time so the audience could see what i was called down with but yeah this one did not work out for us and we are trending in the wrong direction at one three so clearly as I'm tilting, with one limp, I raised the king eight of spades to $15. One late position player calls, the big blind calls, and the limper call. We end up going four ways to a flop of 10-8-8, we flop trips. There's two diamonds out there, so plenty of flush draws to get value from. Get value from jack nine, nine, seven, random tens. Great board to bet and start building a pot. So I start with a $30 bet. My image is quite poor as I was just caught bluffing it off, so... Don't expect to get a whole lot of respect for this bet. And that's somewhat confirmed as after the player to my direct left calls, the big blind raises to $100. If he has pocket tens, good for him. But otherwise, I'm beating pretty much every other eight besides ace eight. And if he has that, I mean, so be it. I've decided to play king eight. I get what I deserve. As well as 10 eight, but we do beat eight nine, eight seven. Diamond draws, straight draws, we're not folding and we're not calling. We are all in for approximately $500. Oh, yeah. The player to my direct left calls. Okay, that's shocking to me. And then the player who made it 100 folds. When it goes call, call, I assume my opponent has a draw. I ask him if he wants to run it twice. He says, absolutely, we can run it twice. Good news for me. The first board completes the diamonds. I'm quite upset with that. The second board completes the diamonds, but we make it eights full. But all that doesn't really matter as my opponent had king eight off suit. I guess I can't judge as I opened the king eight suited, but both of us are going to chop approximately a $160 pot before the all in. So both of us make a decent amount of money on this hand. Following that, I'm in the big blind. A late position player raises to $20. The small blind calls. I looked down at pocket kings, trying to decide what is the best sizing here. I decided to size up, don't really want to go three ways with this hand, so I make it $100. The late position player made it 20, counts out his whole stack, looks like he has a difficult decision to make. Eventually puts in the call, alright. Small blind folds, pretty much a good situation, exactly what I wanted. And we get a very good flop, queen 5-5, five, five, two clubs. If my opponent has ace queen, king queen, queen jack, we are probably getting it all. As well as if he has a flush draw, we're probably just getting it in. So this is going to be one of the time where I bet about half pot, $110. My opponent thinks for a little bit, but then eventually decides to fold. Claiming he had ace-king. So somewhat disappointed we didn't just get it in pre with against that hand. But very happy we didn't get an ace-high board, as that's usually how it goes when you play kings. Following that with one limp, and the player to my left that posted, he missed his blinds. I raised two twenty dollars with ace-10 off suit. The poster decides to call as well as the big blind and a limper. So we end up going four ways to a flop of ace six deuce, two spades. There are some times where I'll check top pair decent kicker to protect my checking range, but this is not going to be one of those times. Going to play a little bit standard ABC. I bet $45 and all three players fold. So we show an ace and we take down a decent sized pot. After that, the player to my right ended up flopping a straight flush, which is good for a $300 high hand bonus this month at one Eye Jacks at Sarasota. Don't need to be the high hand in the room, just need to have quads or better. So congrats to that guy. Cool to see a straight flush. Next hand of note. With an under the gun straddle, plus one raises to 30. Folds to me, I have pocket tens. Think versus an under the gun open tens would not be a very good three bet. I think you need jacks or better if I'm correct would have to check the charts on that but either way tens is not gonna be a fold i choose to just call and the straddler decides to call as well so we're three ways to a flop of jack jack deuce two hearts pretty good flop for me two jacks are definitely better than one here so probably gonna have to call at least one bet but it checks all the way to me now i'm thinking i want to go for some value slash protection here gonna go closer to two thirds pot i bet 75 dollars don't really want king queen ace king any of that stuff to be able to see free turn cards. We also get to establish the betting lead and play the rest of the hand with that and in position. The $75 gets the Strahler to fold, but the player who made it 30 to be in with decides to call. So we're going heads up to a turn card, which is the deuce of clubs. 
When my opponent checks to me a second time, I do think there are jacks in his range. An opponent that flops trips like ace jack probably would check the flop a decent percentage of the time having so much of the board locked up. So not certain I'm best here, but definitely happy to get one street closer to showdown. I check it back. And the river is the bink ten of spades. We got there. Or at least I thought I did for a microsecond. Then I realized that jacks full of deuces beats tens full of jacks. So... If check two, definitely going to throw out a bet here. I can get value from all ace highs, all worst pocket pairs. But my opponent decides to bet $110. Well, I mean, I'm not folding. Maybe my opponent would turn a hand like ace king or ace 10 into a bluff. So we're definitely going to call this one. And we end up beating pocket queens. One of the very few hands that might have called a raise, but probably not too often. Pretty happy with how I played this one. Following that, a middle position player raises to $20. I look down at black pocket sixes. I'm going to make the call here. The small blind and the big blind call. So we end up going four ways to a flop of nine, three, deuce, two diamonds. The preflop aggressor continues for $30. And I don't think there's too many nines in his range. I think he likely has overs and diamonds a lot more often than a made hand. One over card is pretty good with pocket sixes. We're not going away just yet. We make the call. The small blind decides to call as well, so we end up going three ways to a turn card, which is the four of diamonds. Kind of disappointed that diamonds get there. We do pick up a gut shot to a straight draw, but all that kind of seems moot as the preflop aggressor now checks to me. Now thinking it's possible he could have tens plus, maybe a nine, and all those hands we put in a terrible spot if I bet here. I don't think a flush would check into two people if they bet their draw, so can somewhat rule that out. Anyway, I decide to fire for $110. If I took it down here, that'd be excellent. Otherwise, a 5 or 6 should be able to give me the best hand at least some portion of the time. What's disappointing is when the small blind decides to call. He is the opponent that could have flushes in range. He just called pre-flop, check called flop, and then check called in flow again on the turn. So, definitely not feeling great about him being my opponent. But I am happy the player to my direct right decides to let it go. And the river is the deuce of spades. So we somehow beat a hand like 3-4 if that's even possible. I don't think my opponent can really call with a whole lot of nines here. So when he checks to me, I'm beating all single diamonds. I'm beating like ace-4, ace-3, maybe like an ace-10 single diamond holding. So when he checks to me, happy to check it back. I have some showdown value. And it is enough showdown value as my opponent has ace-queen with the ace of diamonds. So definitely a pretty nice pickup here. And the stack's looking decent, in for $800 today, so we got about $350 in profit in front of us. Before we look down at Ace King of Diamonds, and with one limp, an early position player raised $25. Definitely 3 betting this one, I make it $85. The Under the Gun Limper decides to call the $85, and now I'm getting kind of excited because the player who made it $25 only has about $150-ish behind so if he decides to jam, which he should a lot of the time if he's going to continue, I get to reopen the pot, possibly get it all in, push the small blind out, get an extra $85 in there. But unfortunately for me, the player who made it $25 just calls the additional $60. Well, okay, we're going three ways to a bloated pot, but we do have Ace King, we do have Position, but we do not get a good board at all. 10 8, 5, Rainbow, not a single diamond out there, not my favorite. Under the gun checks, the preflop aggressor decides to go all in, just jam into me. The total is $92. I think my hand is fine to call here. Overs, backdoor straight draw. If he has just a single 10, I do think I'm getting about the right price to call anyway, so we're not going to give up just yet. We call the $92. It's unfortunate for me that the under the gun player decides to call as well. I suppose that shouldn't change things too much. If a turn ace or king comes, I should have the best hand. Jack or queen should be able to check and get one street closer to possibly binking Broadway. But the turn is the nine of hearts. Very much not my favorite. Does not help me in the slightest. Shouldn't really help the under the gun player all too often. But maybe I'm wrong as he leads for $320. Well, I can't call this bet. Kind of disappointed at how the run out came out, but... We get to see the hands turn over, and the under-the-gun player had pocket queens? And the other player had pocket deuces? Some really weird hands to show up with, mostly because the under-the-gun player just limp-called with queens, and then the deuces player decided to call, and then just lead jam on the 10-8-5 board. Very peculiar play by both opponents, but both hands are still better than ace-king.
That's okay, now it's my turn to pick up queens. With one limp, I raise to $25 with pocket queens, one late position player, and the limper decide to call, so we end up going three ways to a flop of queen 4-4. Four four. Quit smiling, you idiot. You're supposed to be a professional. Two hearts. Suppose that's less relevant, as a full house is better than a flush, but it's there nonetheless. When it checks to me, as usual, with top set, I think I just have too much of the board locked up. Really nothing at all to be afraid of, so we want to give our opponents a chance to catch up a little bit. We check it back. Turn is the six of hearts, and plan works swimmingly as the early position player raises to $20. I could raise right now, but because I have position on him, I can guarantee a bet gets in on the river. So I'm going to just call this one. Hopefully he puts out a bet on the river. We can raise then, get all the value we want. Even better news to me, as the later position player calls as well. So one of them probably has a heart draw, hoping for a heart. I think if anyone had a four, I would have heard about it by now. So hoping for a heart to complete, but it does not. The river is the six of clubs. Now the early position player bets $50. I live for the simple things. Like how much this is gonna hurt. If this wasn't a board pairing six, I probably would have raised to like 300, 350. Full polarization, just no a four has to call. But since now a 4 is losing to any 6, I think I have to go a more standard 3x size, so that's what I do. I raise to $175, I have the third nuts, only losing to quads, feels pretty good. And the late position player does not snap fold, he's thinking about it. This is a good development for me. And then he eventually puts in the call. This could open the door for the leader to just call as well, or even raise, but he eventually does let it go. I quickly announce queen's full, no slow roll, as quick as I can flip it over. My opponent got a very unlucky running sixes to give him a less than best full house as well. Definitely makes up for the ace-king hand, we will take it. But now we look down at pocket jacks, with a button straddle, there's two limps. I raised to $40, honestly GTO should be 70 or 80, so this is like a massively too small raise by me, but it happened. We end up going four ways to a flop, as everyone calls, which comes ace, queen, three, two diamonds. Two overs and an ace, good for my perceived range, not good for my exact hand. Also not pretty much a board I want to bet into three people without actually having an ace or a diamond draw, so when it checks to me, I can happily check this one back. Somewhat prepared to give up, until the turn is the nine of clubs and it checks to me a second time. I think anyone with an ace would have had to have bet by now, as well as a diamond draw. So I can pretty much narrow people down to single pair of queens at best. So when it checks to me, I'm going to go for a bluff here. I bet $85. Alright, button folds. Small blind thinks for a very long time. He eventually lets it go, and the hijack decides to put in a call. Somewhat reluctantly, took a very long time with it. So probably going to just shut down river. Except the river is the king of hearts. Probably the only card I would consider bluffing at, that and the king of spades. Reason being, both the diamond draw and the club draw brick out. So if my opponent had either flush draw, those are hands that I'm beating. Additionally, if my opponent was just getting sticky with a queen, getting another over card and facing a second bet would be pretty tough to hold on to. And then finally, having pocket jacks, I could easily have jack 10 myself, of both clubs and diamonds and play it pretty much the exact same way. So clear nut advantage, trying to get a queen to fold, all the draws miss, I throw out $160, praying that this one gets through, bluffs have not been going my way today, and they will continue to not go my way. My opponent eventually slides it in. I say you're good. It's actually the same player from the 1-3 table. I want to see it this time. I flip it over. He has ace-5 off suit. So blocking the club flush draws that are somewhat relevant. Side note, I do think ace-5 is a completely fine call down. Ones decide to limp it pre. This brings us to a final hand of note. Under the gun raises to $30. I'm in middle position with ace-king of hearts. It's going to be 100 to continue because I have ace-king of hearts. Under the gun is the only caller, and we hit top pair on ace, jack, four, two diamonds. Ace, jack, definitely a concern. Diamond draws somewhat less, as it is heads up and a three bet pot. Not too many combinations of those exist. 
So we can happily go for a down bet here. We're going to bet our top pair good kicker. We go for $60. When my opponent calls, we're really hoping to not see a diamond on the turn. And we do get a clean turn of the six of spades. When my opponent checks to me, I don't think there's too many hands that will call three streets here. So I'm going to go for a check back on the turn and value bet on any clean river. When we check it back, the river is not clean. It is the five of diamonds. So pretty happy I checked back the turn here. Now I get to play this in position when the obvious draw gets there. Side note, if I bet the turn, I just check back this river 100% of the time. So there's not really any missed value when you take a street of pot control versus a flush draw. But I do not get the decision. My opponent bets $110. Well, as played, I'm just going to call here. I pot controlled to try to keep it small in case the flush came in, and it did. So we're just going to call. And we end up beating ace-queen of clubs. So did miss out on some value based on that exact hand, but the runout was not exactly ideal to get full stacks in on this one. On this day, we are into the game for $800, out of the game for $1,070 which is a profit of $270 across five hours equates to $54 an hour or 11 big blinds an hour. Yeah, kind of a back and forth session for me today. My bluffs really did not work today at all. They were called down every single time and that's just gonna happen sometimes. But if you're never caught bluffing, then you're really not bluffing enough. So we'll take it. We like to have bluffs in our range at all spots. So still happy to book a profit. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you on the giveaway, and I'll see you on the next one.